Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. We've got something special in store for you today, so we're going to kind of get to it quickly because I have a feeling we're going to have a whole <laughs> lot of questions that you better be prepared for. Um, we are covering, it's episode 72, uh, Artist Self-Improvement Series number six. You're Ooh, the lucky number six. I like that. Galleries, how do you approach them? What do you do? So I am standing here with C. Brennan Day, one of my very dear friends, actually, Hi there. which is probably going to get us in a lot of trouble. Yes. And there's, I'm just going to warn you, there will be hijinks at some point, I'm sure. We have them stored right there. Yes. But he is the client and artist liaison for the Little Art Gallery here in Raleigh, North Carolina. His job is essentially to deal with people that come in and ask these type of questions and then to sell the work to the people who want to buy it. Yes. So I thought who better to actually talk to us about the subject and what better place than a beautiful gallery to discuss it. So, and in case you guys remember the episode with Ophelia a few weeks ago, we, <laughs> we, we've we we filmed it with her work right here. Just, you know. No Ophelia. Yes, thought we'd, thought we'd uh, point that out. <laughs> But I'm going to turn it over to you. Would you mind telling us a little bit about the Little Art Gallery and kind of what you do here and, and all that? And then, Absolutely. Um, Little Art Gallery is probably one of the, uh, North Carolina's uh, oldest galleries. It started in 1968 uh, by Ruth Green. And uh, she, she founded it. And it's been a family-run gallery since then. Her daughter took over about 17 years ago and has been running it ever since. And uh, we do things a little bit differently. Um, we we treat people fairly. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. Uh, you may, if you come in, we're not like the whispering gallery. You won't find one light, one painting. You'll find a lot of things to discover here. So, but it's you know, and my job here is to talk to people that come in and talk to artists that come in and kind of help them tune how we present and everything and work with uh, the customers and help them make a good decision. And that's yeah. yeah no I, I I agree well and and you've kind of understated how awesome the gallery <laughs> is I'm I'm just gonna say that I have been a fan of Little Art Gallery ever since I moved down here I guess my family moved down here in '89 so I remember it over in North Hills Mall and yes I was asking them about an artist that I saw there that I remembered <laughs> and it's been so long nobody remembers them but it was giant box cars from trains and and they were a wonderful and, artist oh my gosh it was amazing just so can't remember the name. Yes, a little fall. Yeah, well, I was still in college. I just was like here for a minute and was back up north. So, but it's this is a great place because there's, like you said, not that kind of austere, you know, highbrow nature. It's it's very down to earth. There's anything from beautiful artistic pottery pieces to fine art crafts to some just really amazing um, paintings, some sculpture, glass. There's all sorts of just really neat stuff. It's a great place where you can buy inexpensive gifts mm -hmm. all the way up to expensive art. Well, so we also look at it like art does not have to be super expensive and we 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 like to think that a lot of times we are the first when someone is starting to buy original art, um, we we like to be the first people they buy from. We have generations of families that buy buy work from us uh, for their children and they, they buy for their children and it keeps going down. So a lot of people in Raleigh, this is their first true original art experience. So we like to, you know, not make it so oppressive, I guess. No, I, I think that that's just... Bad word? Where you just make people feel weird about it. Yes. It's not, it's, art, art should be in every price range. Right. And that's that's what I love about this place. In every medium, too. That's, yeah. That's the other thing, from ceramics all the way up to oils and wood and yeah. all sorts of good stuff. Just all sorts of beautiful stuff. So, that being said, if I walked in here off the street and I was looking at a gallery to look at work, I see all sorts of really neat stuff. I see where my work probably might fit in here. Mm -hmm. Is this something that people should be doing first before they start approaching galleries? Absolutely. When you're when you're first getting into either the professional artist who's been doing this for you know 30 years, or if you're just starting out, you should always ex explore the galleries in the area. Kind of get to know: Do you fit in this area? You know, if you sell purple ping pong balls, but the gallery doesn't sell purple ping pong balls, you may have the best ones in the area, but 
you know, it's not how good they are, it's can it be sold. It is a business. So you have to treat it as such. Know your market. So when somebody walks in, we try to see how they would fit with us. Um, well, first, you want to get to know the, the staff of any gallery that you want to approach. Um, get to know, kind of get a feel for them because every gallery sells and presents differently. So you want to kind of see how they work with you and you work with them, even before you even approach them as a, a as an artist. Just kind of think about it. If you were buying work, would you like the way that do you like the way that they present the work to you? So that's kind of how we get we start them off. Mm -hmm. So then we take it a little further. Um, once you feel comfortable with a gallery, and that's any gallery, you start deciding how am I going to approach the gallery? Do I full onslaught or do I break it up in little pieces? Do I, how do I approach? And what I always say is be as honest as possible. Um, know your work, you know, know how you present it to other people and to, to the gallery. Um, ask your friends to, you know, it's sort of like the job interview. Mm -hmm. you, you want to, you, you want to have an honest opinion from your friends say, oh, yeah, don't don't tell them that, or do tell them that, or even maybe to pr if you're if you're not used to, you and I are used to talking to people yes. and and potentially being in front of cameras and and having to talk about our own work. Yeah, that's not something that I know everybody's comfortable with. No. And and I even know a lot of people in our just our Jerry's Live group on Facebook. They'll kind of see, watch everybody else's work and make comments, but they feel kind of uncertain about posting it themselves. Practice with a friend. Yes. Practice going over, talking about your work. Have your friend give you questions. Yes. Maybe they can write some questions about things to ask you about it so that you're not like, uh, once, yeah. you know, they start asking you stuff because that's, you're, you have to be your own best salesman. Well, you, you have to remember that when you start getting into the world of, of art as your business, it's a business. Um, the gallery is trying to make money and you're trying to make money. So you, you have to take a little bit of that personal, ugh, you know, somebody doesn't like something, you have to let that go because every person likes something a little differently. Yes. So you have to kind of desensitize a yeah. little bit. No, I, I agree. But also you have to know what you're doing and kind of be able to answer the questions. So if I came to you and said, what is your style? Have a reasonable answer and talk about what what the approach to that style is. And if I ask you what your medium is, kind of know your medium. Media, medium, medium, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that I, as the gallery uh, owner or representative, can feel as confident about your work as you should feel confident about it. Because you're our manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You are the you are the builder, we are the seller. Yeah, so, I like that. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's, that good. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that makes sense. You're you're the builder. It's like you're the contractor to yes. the sale. You're yes. you're the realtor. Absolutely, absolutely. Selling that. So yeah. Well, I mean, it's people. People. We all as art. I'm an artist as well. So I kind of I, I get it. There is an angst when you present a piece that is is are they going is they going to like it? Are they going to like it? Um, well, not everybody is. But you have to take that out. And when you come in and you're presenting four or five pieces, mm -hmm. I guarantee you that there's going to be one piece in there that is not going to fit the bill. Don't take it personal. Well, okay, and so in, 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 in looking at that, let's say you bring five pieces to show, mm -hmm. if it's kind of across the board no, ask why. Because you know what, even, even negative feedback sometimes is the best constructive criticism. Absolutely. Maybe it's not that maybe your your genre is on mm -hmm. task. Maybe the medium's great. Maybe you've got a great command of color. Maybe you're just really sloppy. Some of your workmanship needs to be tightened yeah. up. And they just know that, okay, this this is, it. I, I just know there's gonna be a problem selling it because it may be something as simple as that where you then you could say, I, I never realized that. Right. Could I come, would you mind if I come back with some, you know, do some new work and, no is not the end. Right. That's that's what I always try to tell any artist that, that presents to us. No is not the final. 
no is just a temporary step to the next possible gallery or, or maybe two months down the road. It may be as simple as right now orange, whatever color, choose your color, is not hot. You know, and so and you've got five everything orange is orange. Fingers, yeah. um, and I can tell you that from personal experience that not orange, orange doesn't always sell. Um, even though I love it, I love orange. But if the gallery doesn't feel like the orange is going, and I will say, so tell me what is going, what is selling well, mm -hmm. you know, show me your, your top artists and, and kind of get to know yeah. what it is that, that is going well. And then you kind of, you use that as a building block, never burn a bridge. Right. Because I may not be able to use you as a gallery, but the other thing is I may talk to another gallery owner and say, hey, you know, this person was selling a bunch of orange stuff and I see that you're going to be doing orange palooza and copyrighted but uh, <laughs> TM. <laughs> yeah. so um and so i might present that to the other gallery because galleries in the area this this is a very small world artists no artists no galleries no galleries so and also something to consider sometimes people can react when their feelings are hurt you don't want to throw a big tantrum yes <laughs> You don't want to look like a difficult person to work with because the first thing they're going to do the next time they see somebody is say, did that crazy oh. person come in and they, yeah, they just flipped out? Yeah, yeah. but, but yeah. you know, so and save it till you go out. So if you know you tend to be overly emotional or yes. maybe a little sensitive, yeah, throwing in <laughs> tantrums on the floor. Wait till you go back out to your car and then, yeah, then cry. hit the horn and yeah. scream and shout as yeah. much as because that might save you uh, save a face. Lot of effort, yeah. yeah. Don't cut your nose off to spite your face with somebody because people talk. Right. It's a small business. With it's it is. In an area. Any area you have to understand your your as my professors used to say, it's your area of influence. Yes. Or your sphere of Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of the word. I don't know. Superman's, I know where you're going. Yeah. Superman's palace. Anyway, I have no idea. But anyway, um, stronghold. Yeah. Oh, stronghold. stronghold. That's good. Yeah, yeah. No, you're stronghold. So, <laughs> calm it down. Calm yeah. Down. So, in this area, wherever you are, if you are a new artist, you're not going to have the breadth of influence that say someone who's been here for 25 yeah. years. So, you choose your your area your place to know and then when you present there you don't want to burn that bridge because if you burn that bridge it's much more difficult to expand mm -hmm. that. so to build the, it back it takes a while for people to forget yeah yes oh they yes they people will remember people they don't like so um, the other thing is artists are your friends do never ever and I say this a lot never ever talk bad about another artist. Oh yeah. Because if that artist hears about it for whatever reason, they may be in a gallery and they may say, I may say, hey, Amy, did you hear about Katie's work? Is that, uh, what do you think? <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a beautiful smile. Yeah. <laughs> but she threw a tantrum and she doesn't like your work, you yeah. know? And so you're gonna say, oh, I don't, I don't really wanna be in, that, be in the same gallery with that person. Well, and or, so. the, or the same way, if. You don't want to talk bad about somebody who is selling yes. and is the breadwinner for a place. Don't take with the, it. Yeah, yeah, because that could, you know, they may know they're difficult to work with. They may not like the person personally, but mm -hmm. if, if they're selling $30,000 worth of their work a year, <laughs> they're going to tell you, uh, bye bye. Yeah. We'll we'll stick with our, with our you know. The gallery's got to eat. Yeah. So they're going to go yeah. with their, their money. Um, and also sometimes if, if you work with they may be your intro into the gallery because we listen to our artists. You know, as artists, we, we have friends, Amy and Katie, and all the lovely people. Yeah, and yeah. 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 Hi. And um, anyway, um, later. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but we all share. All this being said, say someone is walking in the door to actually 
talk to you. Now I know different galleries have different things. I've read a lot of stuff in line. Mm -hmm. No, because this is a smaller gallery that's kind of more one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, this may play out differently than a larger gallery where one person's in charge, they may be in and out of the office all the time. Is it best, if somebody's coming in to see you, not to be carrying five canvases at a time, is Good it better point. for them to ask, who do I, t are you accepting new artists at this time? Yeah. Um, what, procedure, you know, what is the yeah, what's the procedure for submitting my work for consideration? Mm -hmm. is, is that the, is that the best thing kind of, well, again, or as to a, have a portfolio of slides or a, or, you know, a thumb drive of, you know, what, what do you think, what you think I it's like better, yeah, okay. or a, co a cold call, I mean, I know that's very impersonal, but, yeah, but it, it happens, and, and on the rare occasion, it, it wins, but, you also, somebody wins a lottery, too. Right. Um, Lightning strikes me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For better or worse, yeah. But what the, the big thing is when, when you walk in and you get to know your gallery, you know the individuals in the gallery, and you can ask, who is the person in, who is in charge of purchasing, in charge of looking at work or interviewing artists? Mm -hmm. um, and once you find out who that is, then you can kind of segue gently and say, I am an artist, so they, they kind of know where you're coming from, and is it possible that I present my work to you or to your gallery, and let let the gallery person help you, guide you through that, and then they'll say, well, there's a procedure, or there's, you know, we want to see this, because every gallery is a little bit different. A little bit, we're a little bit more traditional in our, our approach. We like to see images on, a printed piece, mm -hmm. so that way we can get a, a feel for it. And once we get, you know, three or four images in a portfolio, some galleries want to see it just on just on the computer, or on the right. iPad. It just depends on each gallery. But then I always tell people, have your portfolio, five good images of the work that you want the gallery to to sell. Don't put everything in the world in there. You know, if you if you paint wonderful oil, flower, uh, floral oils, floral oils, mm -hmm. that works. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, if you paint something beautiful like that, and you also do wonderful barns or, or automotive stuff mm -hmm. uh, that we were talking about earlier, that you don't want to include them both in there, but you let them know, this is what I primarily do, this is what I'm presenting, and I do other things if you're interested. Now, with something like that, if, and you've got a portfolio, obviously there's room. Mm -hmm. Could you say th these are the five that? But then Best. I also do the, uh, these other things. If you're interested, I have samples of those as well. Yes. Yeah. To, so that it's not like you're like, no, keep paging, no, keep yeah. paging. But it's there if the person has time, Absolutely. rather than you having to then. Right. Well, you want to. You don't want to take up too much of the gallery owner's time. Yes. Um, because their time is incredibly valuable. Usually, galleries are not don't have huge staffs. Mm -hmm. So the person you're talking to, not only are they running the gallery, they're also the sales staff. They're also right. Right, right. janitorial, whatever. So keep it simple. Keep it, you know, five to ten images, mm -hmm. depending on the gallery. And once they leaf through it, gauge that interaction. Are they are they biting? Is there something that that you can see in their eye and, and let them look through it? And if they ask a question, answer. You know, unlike me, don't be too effusive uh, about stuff. Excuse me. And so when you're they're flipping, kind of watch them. And when they get to a page that they hesitate on, you can say, "Is there something about that you like?" And then somebody will say, "Well, I kind of like the blue in this." And then you say, "Well, in that vein, I have more work that involves." other objects mm -hmm. or things link it to it but don't don't always have everything mm -hmm. in your right, portfolio right, right. let them know that you're versatile but but you're very you, you do this floral oils really really well mm -hmm. and then yeah. at the next step once they you say now I do have one or two and I call them live uh, paintings I do have one or two live paintings with me that if you'd like to to review them or look at them be happy to go get them don't lug them in unless the gallery owner specifically says, I would like to see live work. Because that kind of gets in the realm of, I've got a set up, it's a, more of a presentation versus a review. Right, so. right. That's a good point. Thank you.
I'm glad. <laughs> I've been working on that. <laughs> well, I thought I thought it was because people had come in with like yes, forty-eight yes. by sixties under each arm. Yeah, they and to, and they do, and it, and that sometimes will work. More than often, it doesn't. Um, it's overwhelming to the to the gallery uh, reviewer. Um, I would prefer to see five pieces, and then as I get all excited, I will say, "Oh, I like this," and you say, "Oh, but I have more." Let the gallery owner or reviewer be the one that kind of instigates that. Right. Because once that happens, there's a very good chance that you're in. And that's the, the next segue into, you know, bringing it in and, and enjoying that moment. Right. And then also, on the flip side, because there's always a flip side, if they don't like it, if it's not something that, that is working for them, don't don't cut them off and don't don't get so, you know, pull back. Right. Just engage them and say, okay, so I, I, you didn't like what you saw. I have others. This is primarily mm -hmm. what I do, but I do have other varieties. And that gives the gallery owner the option of saying, I like this person. Mm -hmm. I like the vibe of this person. Because mm -hmm. it's also, if I get to, if I work with this person, then I, I get to enjoy them as well. Because right. half of what all sales of all art is, the artist. Right. I can sell a blank canvas to someone who is that that the artist is a wonderful human being I can sell that to someone saying blank canvas they're doing snow scenes and <laughs> <laughs> sorry um, but they're wonderful that they, their dog's name is cheese yeah yeah. Cheese. Yeah. yeah yeah and their dogs is wonderful they you know they're fun and because then people get a, an investment into it but anyway so just be cool relaxed First time they may say no, the next time they may not say no. Well, and, and, if, and it's, if it seems like you're kind of getting that blank face dead end thing and, and it's kind of you're getting the vibe that it's not their thing rather than just grabbing it and shuffling out, you might say, mm, I'm sensing maybe I'm not the best fit for here. Suggestions. Do you know anybody else that might be carrying this type of mm -hmm. work or that maybe I should approach? Right. And, and a lot of times people like to be the bearer of information mm -hmm. and so let that person then become the expert in their field and you say like what you just said mm -hmm. is there somewhere better that you think that this would fit and let them let them say oh such and such gallery on park avenue is there they they handle this a lot more and that gives the the the, the reviewer the also the i've just given an artist to someone else right that means that they actually, oh, do I want to give them, do I want to take it in and try something new? Right. So being positive and engaging the gallery person can actually flip it back. It's it sales. Right. No, no I, I agree. It, so. It's definitely that. Um, should we, do you want to take a few questions Absolutely. on just what we've talked about? Okay. Because I think the next thing that we need to talk about after that is, is, once they've said yes, they want Locking you. It in. What things are they going to need to? You, the, you, yay, you're going to sell work, but yes. but at what cost? You still yes. need to look out for you yes. because this is your handiwork, and it's a and you need to get paid for it. Yes. So then we can cover kind of sure. what they need to know to protect themselves from there and to sell work. Sure. So let's take a few questions if they've got okay. on what we've talked about so far. And then we'll kind of go on to that if you think that that's uh, will that work. No for? math questions. I'm really no, bad at no, because both you and I will just go two and, and two and is duck. A. Yeah. Yes, is us, and that's yes. yeah. the higher we're going with that. I'm yes. leaving if that happens. Yep. <laughs> what what questions do we have so far, ladies? We've got a few. Um, okay. Number one, is it better to show pieces from the gallery or is it better to show a cross section of different styles? That's a great question. Um, I don't know if you heard. She's she's asking if um, is showing a variety of pieces or showing a very consistent uh, imagery be better. Is that did I get that? Okay. So, well, to be honest, that's that's one of those things that you as an artist have to decide. Do I want to present? I you know if you've done a series of abstracts that are blue and on blue on blue, if you do a series that are so similar but that's that's the that's the essence of the piece absolutely because it shows continuity 
It shows that you, you're not just a one-shot one wonder. It, it also gives the gallery owner saying, I can show this, and when it sells, I can immediately get another piece and put it up. Um, the other, on the other side is being able to show a variety of things in the same kind of realm. So if you do florals, doing um, astromeria, doing uh, sunflower, yes. I, I like how you just, <laughs> a bunch of people are going, <laughs> Well, Astromeria, uh, I think they, they score estrogen. high. Estrogen? <laughs> what are you talking about? Baseball. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wrong, wrong podcast. Um, so, but a different <laughs> variety of flowers. <laughs> okay. Tulips or daisies <laughs> or... <laughs> we're artists, so we have a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah, weird no, random we information. Yes. yes. So, but anyway, you show a variety of flowers. <laughs> well, then your essence is floral. So, showing the variety of florals... Then yes, show that. Show right, it shows your depth. It's yeah, not, exactly. It's not this person's great with irises yes. using a projector. You know, it's, stargazer it's, lilies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Love stargazer. Yeah, kidding. Okay. So, they smell that. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So the so that didn't really answer any questions in specific, but it was a. It's one of those things that they're both right. You as the artist have to be. You have to know your work, and if you're going to show a variety. Make sure your technique is yes. is uniform through all consistent. Consistency, Thank you. consistency. Yes, that word. And because if I see a great two daisies, and then your uh, baby's breath is just looks like spatter on a canvas, I'm going to go. Oh, they did two great paintings, and then there's no point in me bringing right. that in because if I sold those two, you're done. Well, and, Quiver I, is empty. and I think to kind of to kind of expound on that question, mm -hmm. sometimes people don't understand when when they say. I, I want to make sure that they're not saying like, okay, so I paint a number of subjects. I'm going to take a beach scene, and then I'm going to take a barn, and then I'm going to take a, a dog commission I did, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to take an abstract, and then I'm going to take, you know, uh, something yeah. that's a. Showing that's not showing anything no. because it's, it, it may, the they may all be immaculately yes. done, but it, it looks like you don't have any focus and right. direction, and it could look a little bit like a portfolio to get into undergraduate program. Yes, not, absolutely. Not so much uh, where you're a serious, consistent artist. Well, one of the things I always remind people is that just like in an automotive setting, you have cars. And if you have a whole variety of cars, but only one of those cars, once that car sells, then you have to figure out how to get what it's selling back. Right. So if you sell that one great abstract and you don't have any others yes. to pull from, I as a gallery person, I have no I have no impetus to put up something completely different. Something that, that is untried and true because a sold piece is the better piece. Or so. if, or if somebody says I want this, and, and do they have more? I'd yes. like to buy two exactly. more in this size, and that's the only abstract they've got. Yep. It may take them eight months to get two more. That yes. person's not going to wait on the sale. The, the yep. iron Gotta is hit what, it now. Pan, pan's hot now. Yep. yep. Strike while the iron's hot. There blah, you go. Blah, 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 oh, blah. Now you're bringing blacksmithing. Up. Yeah. I like that. Well, you know, yeah. between you and I, we're going to hit <laughs> all the Yes, ma'am, in the back. Along yes. that thing, <laughs> what if you work in multiple? That goes back to um, what are you presenting to the gallery? Um, if you're trying to sell, let's say that you are a wonderful woodworker, um, you would do turn bowls, but you are also a phenomenal ceramicist, pottery person, um, then what, what are you trying to sell to the gallery? Are you selling yourself or are you selling the work that you're doing? Well, unless you're going to stand behind the counter and sell both pieces, mm -hmm which you can't do because then you can't create, and that's why you use a gallery in the first place, so right. that they represent you. I'm only going to really, honestly, present one style or the other. So right. try your best to present the thing that you think is going to sell the best, sell the right. most. No, no, I think that, that makes sense. So, and then once you get into that gallery, here's, here's the beauty. Once you get in there and you make a name, the gallery owner may come to you and say, what else do you do? Right. And that's when you really start... It starts winding up, and then you can really explore and do new things and step out. Am I allowed to mention other artists? Yeah. Okay. So, like, 
Do we have sure. a, an artist here in Raleigh. Um, his name is Bob Rankin. Mm -hmm. He is really well known. He paints these amazing abstracts that, that people in Raleigh, you can recognize them a mile away. Mm -hmm. But he also does these amazing figure drawings, these line art uh, primitive figure drawings that don't, you know, people don't recognize as much. But because he is so well known in the first thing, it gives him the opportunity to bring in another style and his name carries across the right. thing. And that's where I go back to selling the artist as well as the piece. Right. So. Like Picasso, everybody knows yes. the blue period, but then there's all that other stuff. Guitar? But you had to start somewhere yes. and then you could get all crazy with exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. The guitar thing. Yes. The sculpture guitar. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying I touched it in New Orleans, but I'm not saying that. No, I did. Did you sniff I did. the paint? Yeah. <laughs> smells like Picasso. Smell yay. Yeah. <laughs> That, oh, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Frida. Do you expect artists to bring their pieces in after they've been accepted, matted and framed, or is that's, that something we're, that we're getting to that? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, bring that up yes, there. yes, but there's specifics on that. That there's a that's a whole interesting subject. I assume that also varies from gallery to gallery. Yes, and, and from artist to artist as well, because what you and I may consider done. Yes. May not be what the gallery considers right. done. So. Well, and this and this is, I think, with and and if you don't have a lot of other questions, we'll just go ahead and transition into the next. It's Frida. She has like thirty-seven questions. Oh, okay. she's awesome. All right, um, but I, I think w when we're talking about um, kind of once you're in, what are these things that the gallery expects of you? Let's touch on that, if you don't mind. Okay. Just kind of the the presentation that that's something you need to talk to them about. Yes. So women right now? No, 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 okay. in a minute, because okay. it sounds like there's more questions okay. with already this, so. I like this. Um, <laughs> going Get back to when you mentioned bringing in printed, mm -hmm. uh, print versions of, of okay. the artwork. Your to, portfolio? Yes. Okay. Um, one artist was asking, what exactly do you mean by print? Do you mean okay. play so, or just? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so, well, where there was Possibly. an episode. There was an episode with Will where we talked about how to take images of your artwork okay. ahead of time. One of our, our, I guess it was our last artist's um, series. Will is a professional photographer at yes. work. He talked about how to take really good, crisp, high resolution images of Bless your artwork, him. which was for this specific purpose. That's why yeah. we did that before we came to this. Yeah. And if you can't do it yourself, that's something you need to have done. And they need to be printed out on decent quality paper. You need to, you know, he talked about color matching and all those things. No That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. We're not talking about Polaroids, right? In a thing, we're not talking about taking it to Kinkos and no. and, and and doing a, a photocopy of it. It's it needs to look very very specifically um, professional. Yeah, the one thing I always tell artists when they present their portfolio or when they present anything to us, do the best you can it, it it is one of those things that and i hate to say that it's about money but you do the most mm -hmm. expensive thing that you can do but if you can only do a color printout on you know an inkjet printer if that's the best you can do do it well mm -hmm. mat it make sure that that your paper is quality paper mm -hmm. matted clean because a gallery it's, and I don't want to use the word ego, but there is an ego. If someone presents to me a highly polished, just professional, I'm going to give that artist, just naturally as humans, we're going to give that artist mm -hmm. more credence than someone who walks in with, you know, printouts that are crinkled on the edges mm -hmm. and coffee stains yeah. or whatever. Thumb they may prints. be beautiful. Thumb, oh. Yeah. yeah. Photographs no, no. with thumbprints. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. So do the best that you can. If you can't photograph, there are tons oh, yeah. of people that do this professionally. You just talk to another artist. Go into yes. a gallery and talk to the gallery and then kind of look at the, the artist in there and say, hey, I'm looking to photograph my work. Do you have a suggestion? Almost every gallery owner that I know, they, they, have, their, they have photographers that they've used before or they mm -hmm. know of an artist who, who's used great photographers and they say, oh, talk to... Amy. Amy has, you know, a wonderful photographer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Will. It's, oh, <laughs> it's Will. <laughs> yeah. Will. <laughs> I need to talk to you later. Yes. Will. So. How do galleries feel about
about artwork that has already been promoted on social media? Depends on how it's pro how it's done. Um, if you are if you are showing the gallery, um, and I'm going to use the word me because if you're showing me work that is from another gallery mm. that's been presented through another gallery before, and you haven't made it into this gallery, you need to disclaim that this was done at Bob's gallery, and you know this is we, it was for a show we did. Now, if he if Bob has that piece in his repertoire or in his stock, then I can't have that, that piece. Right. And if I fall in love with that piece, then he has to take it from another gallery, which talks about the, we'll talk about the non-compete yes. in just a second. But you don't want to take something from someone else because you're competing against yourself and pitting two galleries against each other where you could actually kind of... Make both of them go... Exactly. Let them both help. Not you. playing this. Yeah. So we're done. Yeah. Well, you can also have two galleries that represent an artist yeah. that it, they both, you know, get excited about them and right. they both promote, and then it helps both right. galleries. So, right. So yes. You mentioned earlier um, about the if an artist comes to you with a body of work uh -huh. and you give them some critiques mm -hmm. and they they are not accepted to your gallery is it acceptable for them to for them to then come back to you after they've absolutely because it does two things it boosts my ego because you have taken what i've i've said he seriously needs all that he can get. yes <laughs> trust me this mustache is not growing its own it feeds off ego so if that's the curl. Yes, that's how you I can get always it. tell when it's. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like a barometer. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, but absolutely, if I give you if I give you advice and you take that advice and you call me and say, hey, I listened to what you said, I would like to come and show you, even if you don't, and you can say that, even if you don't accept it, I just want you to if this is what you meant, mm -hmm. you come back to me. There is a good chance I'm going to be all like, "Ooh, they listened to what mm -hmm, I said." Mm -hmm. I think I'll give them a try. It's all it's a it's a win-win situation. And there again, you didn't burn a bridge. I now believe that you're going to listen to me as a, as an artist, and I'm going to turn around and go, "Well, I'm going to help this artist out because mm -hmm. I now have a vested interest." Right. So. They're serious about it. They've, yes. they've proven that they're yes that they can take the some stash. direction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yes. alive. <laughs> Smells like Mountain Dew. <laughs> How do you feel about seeing sold pieces in a portfolio, or um, do you only want to see stuff that's available to you? No, uh, that's that. I, uh, in case, yeah, it's asking. Yeah, question. just in case they didn't hear it. So the question was, in your portfolio, should you see sold pieces? Yes, because that proves that you are mm -hmm. sellable. Now, also, you don't want to have all sold pieces. Right. And you also, if you show a sold piece, be ready to have a, a similar piece in mm -hmm. your stock. So if I say, that sold piece, I loved it. I need something similar. And you, you have to be less of, of the sensitive artist. I say this with a little grain of salt because I'm this way as myself. You have to turn off the, I, I put my heart and soul in that piece. Right. There's no, not another one like it. I'm burnt. I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but you have to... <laughs> I don't know what that was. That's, I've seen you do it yeah, a number you. of times yes. through the years. Usually so. there's a chaise lounge yeah, that I that's lean true. out. That's true. Yeah. Props. <laughs> um, so the, it, it, I want to be able to pull and have a piece, and you have to be able to turn it on and say, yes, I can do that puppy dog in a car again. Well, even better. Usually the second time yeah, yeah. usually should be better. Right. So, yes, absolutely. But make sure you have pieces in there that are that I can I can pull I can say I want these three and that one if that one's sold I want one similar mm -hmm. so I think that's good harsh no that's it, it harsh. makes sense all right so let's go ahead and just if there's other questions just save them we'll we'll come back to them okay so we we've been accepted <laughs> you're in Woo Woo fireworks yay yeah, exactly now comes the fun yes <laughs> don't, don't say it like that it's you'll a, scare them it's a business. <laughs> Um, so there's really, there's no alcohol in this, no, no, no. really, there's not. Strangely, no. <laughs> Just caffeine. Yeah, lots of caffeine. Um, so the, 
once you once you agree that oh this is going to work, mm -hmm. I really like you. I think you're a good fit with the gallery. You need to feel comfortable with the gallery because we are going to be representing you. We're going to be saying things about you and we're going to to do our best to play you up. So if you're if you're not comfortable with the way we are talking and the way we promote you, maybe it might be a good fit. But let's say that it works. Well, the next thing you have to do is you're going to figure out pricing. You're going to figure out how many pieces the gallery wants you to keep in reserve that will not go to another gallery. Mm. That if I call mm -hmm. you, I can get it immediately. The faster you can turn around and bring a piece in, the faster I can sell it, the faster we make money and the faster you make mm -hmm. money, which is the important bit for you. So most galleries will have a contract, hopefully. You, you, it's for protection for you yes. and the gallery. Oh, yeah. Because it is a business. Things happen in businesses. Um, it doesn't happen very often with galleries, but shoplifting, uh, damage, fire, theft. Them going out of business and oh, just yeah. disappearing. Yes. And I, I, I've got a friend in Raleigh who had work at like a farm table restaurant. Yep. And the restaurant just up and closed. Mm -hmm. And luckily a friend saw, was driving by oh. and saw them like the well, collectors and stuff there was like, what happened? You you got your art, right? And it, it took her forever to get it back from the person. And then you can't she sell that She didn't work. have anything. I was like, please tell me you had a sheet that said that they had it. it didn't. Well, here's, here's a, the funny thing about that, <laughs> is that even with that situation, if with that contract, you, you have to, it has to be a binding contract. Right, it can't, right, right, right. You know, because if, if someone goes out of business, the creditors take possession of anything that's within the, right. the premises, anything that's behind the doors. So your work becomes part of that. Now, it's different in every place. I'm sure right. there's people that are going to say, oh, no, that can't happen. It has happened. So I, I, I'm, I'm living proof. That's why I'm a little adamant about that. But your contract should state that what the gallery's obligation mm -hmm. to you is, and in, and in turn, your obligation to the gallery. Now, there are different contracts there, every every person has a different mm -hmm. contract. So, but just keep in mind that there's non competes. Yes. So there's explain what that is. Okay. So a non compete is if you're in my gallery, and I say I don't want you in a gallery in the same shopping mall that we're in, in the same town, in the same city or, or state. Yeah. Um, and I don't want, uh, or if you have a a style, I don't want you selling that style in another mm -hmm. region. So. You have to decide, is, is that gallery worth being locked into? Are they going to sell my work better than gallery Bob's gallery? Is, is, is that going to work for me? Now, once you sign that contract, live up to it. Yes. Because the more you live up to mm -hmm. it, the more I'm going to try to sell your work. The more I can call you and say, I need, I need another piece. I've sold your work. I need another piece. And according to your contract, you have three for in reserve. You can tell the gallery, I'm painting fast, you're selling faster than I can paint, that's understandable. But if you're working with another gallery and they take those other four, you run into a little conflict. Yeah, yeah. And then you make that, that whole, you know, I'm gonna talk bad about you to other galleries. Right. So. Right. Well, I won't, because I'm really nice. Well, not really. <laughs> My parole officer. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that. Yeah. <laughs> so Only for the pro officer. <laughs> he knows where I am right now. Yeah, exactly. So, well, you know, the yeah, ankle monitor. Yeah, I know. So. That's why we got All right, so, so, that's, yeah. so that's good. So, so up front, you want to go ahead and get that contract yes. and see what it's got there. Know your contract. You. Read your contract. If you're not comfortable with it, have someone else review it that is Definitely. comfortable with it. Yes. There are plenty of services online that you can you can use as a resource. It, so if you are going to be selling works that are going to be very valuable, and valuable is based on your own income and the gallery's income, it might be worth it to talk to an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, there are attorneys that specifically handle uh, art-related or entertainment-related items. So the contract will be somewhat similar. So, well, and if there's something you're not comfortable with, it doesn't.
doesn't they don't just walk say away. Something. Say something. Yes. There might be something where they can. They're they really if they really negotiate. want you. They may be willing to negotiate and change yeah. things around. Yeah. And there's, so but usually inside the contract, you're going to talk about a non compete. You're going to talk about uh, a realm of exclusion. Mm -hmm. and it sounds harsh, but it's really kind of not. Um, and you're also going to be talking about percentage. If galleries, and here's where we talk about the money, which is the most artist's biggest, you know, oh, what do I do? Galleries have to operate. They cannot sell your work for free. So you work out a percentage. You work out a deal. However, the, each gallery does it, and every gallery I have dealt with, similar but different. Right. So right. some galleries, they take your price, and then they add their percentage. Some galleries split the price of your work. So you want to kind of know what you're getting into. Don't don't be offended as well as the gallery calls you. If there's, they're selling four of your pieces, and they say, hey, can you negotiate the price on it? Right. Be willing to work. Right. It is a business. Right. Well, and, and, and all of this is already assuming that you researched how often is the gallery open. They're only open on Thursdays, yeah. and they're not open on the weekends, and they only do like a first Friday thing. Is it worth it? Yeah. Paying this, is it worth having a non-compete? Is it worth all these things? Is it open on the weekends when there's more traffic, when people are buying? Those are things you should have already researched yeah, you also, before you even get to this point. You also so, want to know, people forget. Yeah. Don't think about it. You also want to look at the, art, the artists that are in that gallery as well. Are they well-known artists? Because if you've got, you know, 90 artists and these are all the tops in this area, then yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's worth it to let your own value go down a little bit compromising yeah, right there's a good word compromising to get your work into a gallery that has tons it has of, names that are bringing people yes. in because somebody may come in and to look at Bob Rankin yes or whoever or Ophelia and yeah and, and then if they're looking around you know waiting for help or whatever or it's just they kind of want to look through before they decide they may see your work and just yeah. be like oh my god I yes. need four of these well, you know, so so that name yes. brought you brought them in, but then you know that's they brought them that's to the yard. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was just looking at your picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's coffee. It's coffee. I was like, he's gonna do it. <laughs> if, and now if you can work the word giblets into it, then she'll really be upset. Really? Yeah. Oh, challenge accepted. <laughs> Is calling the and the drone, and she, it makes her very unhappy. Okay, so yeah, every rubber band. Yep, she will use she paper will. clips. It makes much more of an impact. Yeah. Yes. So any other questions about? That? Yeah. Any questions to this point for Frida? She's like she's what? writing huh? the great American novel over there. Wow. She's, <laughs> she's got beautiful handwriting, by the way. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Oh, you can see it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm having so, to the question. She's, yeah, yeah. How many pieces should you have ready and available to a gallery? Talk to your gallery. It's real simple because if your gallery is a high volume gallery, you'll want to have more. If it's if it's a if you're selling a piece for ten thousand dollars and the gallery sells one piece every month, then obviously you don't have to have Maybe it'll be 10 on the end. Exactly, exactly. But, there again, keep painting. Because yeah. you, it, as long as you, once you get into the first gallery and you start feeling that, oh my goodness, I sold a painting, you're going to want to try another gallery. You want to move, expand your realm of influence. And when you do that, be aware that every time you go to another gallery, you need to be positive and talk, go back to what we were talking about before. Best mm -hmm. work, and because one gallery will talk to another. Because say that you've got in one gallery you're not doing so well with particular blues. I'm selling lots of blues. I can call that other gallery. And say, I know you represent that. Would you be willing to swap something? Yeah. And then you contact the artist, and then the artist has that opportunity to improve their sales. Right. It's a business. That is a brilliant question. 
I will answer as an artist and then as a gallery. The answer of an artist is, it's expensive for us to ensure our work. While your work is in your home, have, a, have your homeowner's insurance. Get, make sure you make a list of the work that you have in your home. That's a big, big deal. Like my, I, I, I lost 25 paintings in my house fire. My mother's house burned down. Long story. I love that. Anyway, so I lived there for a short time. Anyway, I'm an artist. Years, yeah, what? I'm an artist. <laughs> um, anyway, but the, it burned down. Fortunately for me, we had listed it on her homeowners, and so I got a good percentage of that money back. That being said, you have to be able to prove the value of the piece. It has to have been in a gallery in order to get the value. And that's another thing. They can they can fight you. Just, just have your documentation. As a, once it's out of your house and you're transporting it, I think, I'm not sure, I think it may be covered under... Depending on how good your automobile insurance yes. is, some, some of it is and some of it isn't. I don't know what even the wizard says. It's, so. I, I don't know if yeah. it even does that, but yeah. that's definitely something to, to consider and to talk to your insurance agent. Right. Right. Once it comes into the gallery, that will be part of the contract. In the contract, it will say we are responsible for X, Y, Z, or we are not responsible for X, Y, Z. Remember, we're artists. We create these, so the actual value of the piece is not what you think it is. It's the value of the paint and the canvas. Unless you are a well, well-known well artist that you're selling a lot, that you can document that your pieces sell for X amount, and then still you only get a percentage of that. Mm-hmm. So just... Be aware that as you do it, you know your know your business. It's a business. You understand that it's a business. This is your product. You right. are the manufacturer. Don't treat it as, as as just as your love affair. It is what you do for a living. Hopefully, you hope to get that. Yes. Yes. Anyway, that's why we're here. Yes. Any gallery that would that you would not feel comfortable walking into and observing, don't go to it. Because if you feel sneaky, then there's some a bad vibe in that gallery. And as an artist, you're doing a couple things as you're, you're doing this. You're looking at what's selling in the area or at that gallery. You're you're judging you're judging the market as it were. You, you have a vested interest in doing that. If you feel comfortable with that gallery, announce yourself. You say, hey, I'm an art, a local artist. I'm just looking on it. Or even, even before you do that, see what the customer service is. Are yes. they looking at you like, oh, that's I don't yeah. I don't think you, they can afford anything, so right. I'm just going to ignore them? Or they do they have three you know college-age girls over in the corner? Yeah. 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 Is that a place that you would want to send people that are looking at your work? Do you do you feel like they would be treated well? Do you you know that's would they that's, be able to sell your work? Yes. Because if if you're selling works for ten thousand dollars, keep in mind as as I as I talk and say this, what we sell pound for pound is more expensive than any luxury vehicle. So we have to tr- treat it as such. Can the person that is selling sell the work? Mm-hmm. So, yes, you're not being sneaky. Mm-hmm. You're being smart. Mm-hmm. Now, and you're not obligated to let them know that you're an artist. Just if if you're going there, don't don't go in there and take up too much of their time. I say right. this, yeah, yeah. this is kind of selfish yeah. of me. Don't take up all their time because if they have a whole bunch of people in there, you want to let them sell their wares so that their gallery improves so that you can get into right. their gallery. But you I, know, I don't think that's selfish because you wouldn't want other people doing the same to you exactly. if it was your work that... Someone yeah. was trying to sell, and someone was like, "But well, just one more question." Yeah, and you you'll pick up a lot by just being just being present. So, I have several questions about contract type things. Okay. Um, uh, can I say one thing? Yes. I'm not an attorney. Um, Nor does he play one on Facebook. No. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> despite what the mustache and bow tie says, it's it's evil. I'm just saying. <laughs> so contracts, I like to crack. Um, <laughs> So just know that I I only go from a personal experience and what I've seen. So anyway. Do you 
read my mind. I was going to lead with, I assume that this is going to vary based on the gallery and also what your mm -hmm. lawyer tells you. Mm -hmm. um, Non-compete clauses. Mm -hmm. How does that work if you are trying to enter a jury show? Different from every region. Um, usually with, when a gallery, if you are in going in a jury show, if, unless it's a jury for purchase, if you're going into a show, a gallery should encourage mm -hmm. you to go out because the more awards you win, the price can go up. Um, the mm -hmm. more certificates, the more zeros. Mm -hmm. So, What if somebody approaches a very small local gallery mm -hmm. and they don't do contracts? Well, then you as an artist have a responsibility to... Provide one yes. for yourself. <laughs> Remember when we looked at the, was it Tad Campbell? The, the book that, for one of the things that we talked about, there's a, a basic book for artist business stuff. There's actually um, different kind of very basic written um, contracts for anything from uh, renting studio space to selling work to all of that. Ha it's good to have those types of documents handy. Yep. So in that interest, you still have something in contract, you're still covered. Well, it also means you, know, you want to have a contract if you are someone who does um, commission work as well. Mm. Because oh, yeah. you know, that's, an, that's another, another <laughs> element of working with a gallery that the galleries can protect you a lot better through commission work because they take the brunt of the questions and they filter filter the requests, you know. They take deposits so yes. that you don't have to deal with it. They have the con the right to if the person's not happy. Yep. And they can go after the, the person yes. if they don't pay. Right. So, that's it. That's good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, she's good. Yeah. That book is getting longer. I know. I Lots know. Of questions. If you are applying to a gallery. Yes. And you have a website. Mm -hmm. It's got pictures of all Which, your lovely paintings. Yes. Should you display pricing on your website? That is a that is a brilliant. Question. Should you put prices on your website? Yeah. Well, yes and no. Yes, if you talk to your gallery and mm -hmm. you have an agreed upon price. Um, this gallery, what we what we do is is I, you know we you what you sell it for personally is what we sell it for because we don't want to compete against ourselves and you don't want to compete against your own gallery. So if mm -hmm. you, if someone sees the work on your website but it's actually in the gallery and they say, I want to buy it, and you sell it for cheaper, well, the gallery has yes. just lost that money and the, their, their hamburger to feed themselves because they can't afford it anymore. Or steak, whatever. Could be expensive piece. But anyway, yeah, so yes on that instance. No, some galleries don't want you to put a price per piece because there may be some deal worked out that the the value of the piece is based on what the gallery has in stock and what you have in stock. Really just work with each gallery because one piece on the website with a price should be in one gallery. Yes. Does that make sense? So, and something to consider about if you're going to put prices on your on your website even before you're approaching galleries because you can always take that off you need to figure in what a potential commission would be mm -hmm. because I've, I've done that before and thought well but I'd have to raise the price to be in a gallery right. no that price better be higher to start with if, if you're giving a gallery anywhere from 30 percent to 50 percent of the sale you can't put it for you know three hundred dollars in their gallery, a hundred dollars on your website. It needs to be that three hundred dollars already, because then you can't just like magically be like, okay, but but you have to sell it for this. Right. Already figure that in before you even start that pricing scheme, so that then there isn't going to be this issue later on. And then the final aspect of that that we don't talk about much as artists, the tax. Your website, if you sell the work on your website, you you technically are required to yes. co collect tax. You are a business. The gallery has to collect tax. You have to as well. And I I I always tell people when they're when they're collecting tax to to put the price on there and then right below the price plus tax. Yes. Because people say, oh, but you said it was three hundred dollars. It was three hundred dollars 
plus tax. Yes. So that way you're avoiding that little pitfall of, oh, well, this is not what you said. Right. It's on there. So, because the gallery is going to charge tax. Right. So. And that's a very good point. Very good point. Yes. Great. Let's say I have a bunch of prints of my artwork that I want to sell, and the original piece is now in a gallery. Again, what she's saying is um, I have a a piece that's already sitting in a, a saleable location. So a piece that's in a gallery and I have prints of that piece. Every gallery is different. But as, as an artist myself, I, I know that if I do a piece and I have prints, if I don't let my gallery know that I also have those and they're available and I give the gallery the option of selling those prints mm -hmm. as well, I'm fighting against myself, mm -hmm. and you're fighting against the gallery, and it it potentially could put you in a very awkward position of losing that gallery, because they're losing the sales. Does a gallery help set pricing for your pieces? A good gallery will help <laughs> you. Um, she's asking about the the pricing. Pricing is based on what you sold for, what you think you can sell for, what the gallery thinks they can mm -hmm. sell it for. Art is a magical thing. You know, a one inch by one inch by one inch cube can sell for millions of dollars, and then a painting the size of a building can sell for a thousand dollars. It's what the market will bear, mm -hmm. what you feel comfortable selling, and what the gallery can sell it for. Be prepared when you walk in, kind of have an idea of what you think it's worth. If the gallery says, listen, you're not charging enough, they're not trying to float, they're not trying to make you, you know, they're not trying to tickle, right. tickle your fancy. They're, what they're trying to do is say, hey, we have to make money, you have to make money. If you're selling it for a dollar and we're only taking a percentage of it, that's not a lot. Right. But we, we think we can sell it for $10. So raise your prices. But then again, once you sell it, once it starts selling in the gallery, right. your website should reflect that as well. Right. And be aware that, update your website as much as you can. So. Yes. So. No, no, that, that should be a, a common thing. Yes. No, I don't have a website. I'm very bad. No. <laughs> I know. We don't like math. Yeah. We don't have websites. No. I've, I've got the domain name. Yes, I do too. Okay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're just as bad as you are. Hey, Katie's. Sorry. Katie's scorning us. I feel Is that an eye roll? Sorry, yeah. eye roll. Go ahead. <laughs> method to catalog and display titles of artwork? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the clearest way possible. <laughs> when you have 47 pieces called untitled, um, which happens a lot. Make up symphony in whatever the color is. That's what I used to do. I didn't like to title stuff, and they were just like, you have to in school. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going Whistler on you. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of symphonies, and you're going to be sorry you asked. Yeah, unless you are selling a, just a ton of paintings that people just want to buy you because it's you, you don't go with untitled. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> create some ambiance for the piece. Create some flair. Create some some verbal color so that the gallery can say, "Oh, this this you know." If you if you have a sunflower, and you say untitled, that's yeah. untitled. But if I if I could say it's a you know heart of the field. Well, that immediately imbues it with a passion and the, and the person buying it automatically falls in love with it versus untitled. It can add a story. Yes. On. I've sold paintings on the title where it was just like not the, and as soon as somebody's like, eh, you look at the title, they're like, why did they name it this? And then it becomes this thing and you're just like, go in oh, any modern art museum yep. and look yep. at the, look at the pieces, yep. the, the, the weird splotch on the the canvas and they've called it, you know, symphony number no. seven in roadway. Yeah. Immediately you get a mental image and you're like, oh, I see it. Or you go, ooh, I or don't get it. It's called Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> I, what? what is this statement based on? And then, but yeah. And then if you so, say, yeah. you pretend, yeah. you say, oh, I, I get it. Yeah. I yeah. have no idea. Yeah, but exactly. everybody thinks you're smarter. Right. Because we're artists. You just say, mm, mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, yeah, we do that a lot when we see stuff. Hmm, that's great. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, nice color. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry. If you are trying to get into a gallery, yes. is it better to walk in 
Or is it better to call ahead and make an appointment? Depending on the depending on the gallery, I always I always give the gallery the opportunity to make the appointment. Aggressive sales is one thing. You can be a very proactive uh, artist and, and say, I want to present here, I want to blah, 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 blah. But if you were to call the gallery and say, hi, my name is, I have X, you know, I'm an artist. I would love to present my work to you. Let the gallery dictate the time and the place. If you feel like that they're like, well, no, we're, we're full, say, well, is there a possibility that I can just have you review it? Maybe you could tell me a wonderful uh, work around a, a, another gallery that we can we can present at, you know, and then again going back to what we said before, you give the gallery uh, a kind of a bolster in their their knowledge and they feel good and you get in, and if they say no, be cool with it because what you present or what you call today tomorrow things may change. Right. Give them a couple weeks. Say I I talked to you about three weeks ago. I was wondering if you had any any interest that I would love to present to you, and then things may change. They may just let you in just to shut you up, you know. But just be cool with it. Be nice. Be pleasant. Be professional. Speaking of professionalism, <laughs> I have to say, when you are presenting to a gallery, and you have your you've worked so hard on your portfolio, it is immaculate. It is professionally photographed. Mm -hmm. Your edges are beautiful. It is a, it is a work of art unto itself. Show up professionally. You are going to you are setting up a relationship. It's 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 like first date. Don't come in. You're creating a persona. Yes. You you the first you, the first time they see you, that's the persona they assume that is you yeah, normally. Absolutely. You know I, if you come in. As, as a flower child, that's how I'm yeah. going to present you to right. other people. And then people that want that, I can sell it. But show up professionally, show up ready with, with I guess, a smile and, and just professionally. You, you don't, you don't want to look interview. like the crazy cat lady on The Simpsons. You don't right. want to look like you should be... Like you've been in your studio with paint right. all over yes, you. Yes, in overalls. and I mean, that's yes. although that makes somebody realize that you're hardworking... Everybody looks like that when they work, chances yes. are. So that's not anything new. You don't want to have so much jewelry clanking and clunking yes. and so many piercings that it looks like if you drink water, stuff is yes. going to... Even if you've Spring. got them, you can take some out to look a little... Gauge your gallery. Yes. If you were... I shouldn't come in with my Renaissance-style paintings decked out in my mohawk and my, and my big... It depends on the gallery. Yeah. If, yes. you, if you go into a gallery that that is... It is a vibe of, you know heavy metal and just it is just the coolest everything's black there's velvet on the walls day glow everything yeah yeah go in there with the mohawk that's, and be ready to, to to slam dance but <laughs> if you go into a gallery that that has nice paintings on the wall lots of florals beautiful abstracts kind of match yourself to what you're trying to to sell in the gallery not just yourself but your work in that setting. They've already gone and gauged the gallery or seen their website or whatever. They should kind of already know yeah. what's going to fly, well, I think. As a gallery also, I'm going to want to do a show for you eventually, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. And if you look very presentable, I'm going to think about you before I think about someone else who did not show up presentable. Even though they're in the gallery, I want to present the best mm -hmm. foot forward. Dress for the gallery you want, not the gallery Ooh. you have. Copyright trademark. Thank you. That was Amanda. Oh, she's brilliant. Maybe we don't have to. Her say handwriting's the, the nice G too. Word. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. We'll be nice. Yes. I have a question. Good. Um, one of our viewers says it seems, at least in New York City, that many galleries state they don't accept submissions. Any suggestions when approaching these galleries, or should one not try? Oh no 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 no. In places that say do not, they do not accept submissions. That's when we talk. We were talking earlier about being sneaky. They got email addresses. They got email address. But the other thing is, you want to find out. They have to get their work from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Find out where they where they're getting the their broker work. Broker or yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Broker. Oh yeah, brokers. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot that, that yeah. dirty word. No, it's not dirty. It's not dirty. 
brokers are good in certain for, systems. For places, yes. for places like that where there's so yes. many people approaching people, because that makes broker, sense for them logically because yeah. then they don't have to deal with people all the time. And they can present the 12 artists at one time. Right. You become part of a bullpen versus right. an individual. In cities... They're casting calls. Yes, exactly. very much so. Oh, that's the brilliant lady, too. She's br She's got pretty good handwriting, I'm, I'm assuming. So it's, I've seen it. Um, but anyway, no... In bigger cities where they there are a lot of people trying to present, know your market, know your gallery, get to know where you want to show because they may not take presentations or they may not take you as a submission, but what they might do is you find out who their broker is and that's just by just feet on the ground learning. Let your broker make that introduction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it, there's always there's always a way in. You sometimes have to be a lot more patient. Remember, well, it's, it's our passion. Oh, and as artists, we're supposed to be creative. Theoretically, so, yes. Uh, other uh, questions? Any, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I think that's all we've got pertaining to what we've just discussed for the okay. moment. What, okay, so let's go back to presentation that the gallery may dictate how you're bringing the work in mm -hmm. to sale. I've, oh. I've heard of places that they will only do the framing in the, however right. they frame it, and then you either pay for it or they don't, you know, you don't keep the frame if you take the work right. back. Oh. Or they may want it framed. So let's talk about that. Yes. So that was what yeah. she, she, she's, she's. Is it more up to date for it to be framed or frameless? Yes. No. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's the very specific answer. Um, so here's, you want your work to sell. If your work is ready to be sold, however the gallery presents it, that's how it's going to be. Some galleries want you to use their frame shop because it's a source of revenue for them. Mm -hmm. It also gives them the ability to kind of dictate how things hang. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, ask the gallery. If a gallery says, bring your flat work in matted, not under glass, don't bring it in under glass. And some of the reasons is safety. If, yes. if, a, if a glass breaks, it could hurt someone and cut your piece, which is far more important than hurting someone. It could damage the piece. If you're, if you're framing, doing framing, make sure that it is a solid frame that you would feel comfortable selling without not just a safety frame, a slat work right. that you're just putting it on to protect the edges. Make it so the gallery does not have to negotiate prices for the frame because, you know, Jerry sells amazing frames. I use them He actually myself. uses them himself. I do. But sometimes a ga someone says, I don't like the black frame right. that you've got on it. I want to use a gold frame. Well, the gallery sometimes can say, okay, what we can do is we can take $10, $20 off, or we'll keep the frame and you just, and we'll frame it for you. Just ask. The gallery will give you that information. It, remember, the gallery is your partner now. Once you're in, you're partners. You represent that gallery as well as the gallery represents you. So it's, it's your be, it is in your best interest to do the best work that you can afford to do use the best materials, use the best, anything that you can afford to do. Don't, yes. you know, go broke doing it unless you really want to, but of, do the best that you can do is the best thing I can say. Right. So, another question? I don't know. She's, wow, she's, is there a certain size that sells best? Yes. We, we were discussing oh, this earlier. Yes. Um, one centimeter to 10 to 12 miles. Anything in between that will sell best. I say that kind of sarcastically, obviously. What? You? Because it depends on the artist, depends on the piece, depends on the area available. If your gallery is, is a micro gallery, like a lot of the, the mm -hmm. New York galleries, that they're you know, 400 square feet, they don't have the room to hang giant pieces. Yes, smaller pieces will sell better. Or they may only hang five pieces. Yes. Or they may have 900 12 by 12s. Exactly. It, it all depends on your work, what the gallery can sell, and just practicality is, is the big thing. So don't, don't paint 
don't paint for the gallery. Paint for yourself that fits the gallery that you choose. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to write that one down. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. More, more drink. Sorry. More caffeine. I was getting serious. Is there anything that you can, th Katie, is there anything you can think of? Is there anything else that you can think of just in your dealings with galleries through the years and in being here that, that we've kind of overlooked as far as things that are important to mention? Promotion. Um, one of the things that, that you want to look at is how does the gallery yes. promote your work? How do they promote themselves? Because you're, pay you're paying for that in your Absolutely. commission. It's not just having somebody here to sell it. What else are they offering you that's that you're paying for that service? Absolutely. You have to remember that it's a business. I keep saying that, but people forget that. When you are contracting with the gallery, not only are you, the gallery is taking a percentage of what you do, but in that percentage, they have to pay square footage. Mm -hmm. They have to pay their own promotion in order to be a gallery to, that you'd want to be in. Then they have to promote your work or other works that involve you because I may not be the, the center of attention as far as my work, but Ophelia, she's getting ready to have a show, so we have to promote her work and that costs money. Certain galleries require you to pay a percentage of that, some don't. Um, and you, that's one of those things that you have to kind of build into your pricing and know before you sign the contract. When you're promoting the gallery, you put them on your website. Mm -hmm. I, and I say that emphatically because you want to, the gallery to have as many hits, even though they're not just selling your work, but you want to promote the gallery. If the gallery does well, you do mm -hmm. well. And if you do well, the gallery does well. It's, it's a mutual society. Symbiotic. Symbi oh, God, that was that word, yes. She's real smart. Um, it's a caffeine. Oh, it is. I gotta get some more. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so just keep the keep that promotion. And when you are when you are getting ready for a show, because that's that's the other thing. Like our gallery is getting ready to have a show, and I and I'm promoting yeah, this whose because show is that? that's Ophelia's and and mine's. He's just so. <laughs> that, man, how long did I take you to get it out of you? Anyway, um, <laughs> so one of the ga things that gallery has to to promote it, but. I need to send it out myself. I need to mm -hmm. glad hand. I need to right. hand people the information. Don't just leave it up to the gallery. You can actually do something that I've, I have found really effective is go to an online site or a local printer and print small cards with your show date on it, as well as the postcard. And put it on your website. Put it on your website. We're displaying for emphasis so um, but put it on your website and make sure that you have your mm -hmm. friends share it social put it media on social media oh. on Facebook on Post Instagram it. I think doesn't Jerry's have a wall of like stuff going on yeah so you know talk to your local art supply store Jerry's and make sure that you work with a lot of the, the people that are sales staff in Jerry's mm -hmm. is they they know they know people, and they know to share your stuff because they have a vested interest. If you do well, you're going to come and buy more mm -hmm. art supplies. Mm -hmm. They look better. They know a famous artist, and it's just <laughs> this wonderful, lovely relationship. I like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, use use that as your reference. Everything you do positively will affect your dollar, mm -hmm. and that's what this is about. Yeah, it's about emotional, uh, you know, bringing, doing artwork, yeah. But it's also about making money to survive. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you can't, if you don't have money to survive, you can't paint and buy the wonderful, luscious new paints and acrylics and oils that are coming mm -hmm. up. <laughs> I know. Exactly. So, um, promotion's a big one. Um, and the gallery should be doing that, too. Find yes. out what, what, if any, not all galleries do it. What if any social media do they do? Mm -hmm. How often are they updating it? Those are the things you already have wanted to look at before yeah. you're going in and approaching them. If you find they're not doing that, but yet say maybe they're gonna take 50%, 60% in some mm -hmm. places, some are what are they 75. doing for it? Yes. What? Yeah, it's, 
them it, cry. It really, if they're, but if they're a gallery that's selling work it, just hand over fist, yeah. but make your own prices to where you're comfortable with that. Right, right. So, but yeah, those are, those are things that you want to consider what Frida would. Yeah. So, obviously it's fair to assume that the gallery should be using social media yes. to mm -hmm. your advantage as mm -hmm. the artist. Is it fair to assume that the gallery is expecting you to Absolute. maintain a social media presence as well? Yes, it is a mutual, mm -hmm. a mutual agreement. It is a mutual benef mutually benef symbiotic. Symbiotic. Oh, thank you for using that word. It's a symbiotic thing. If you promote the gallery and your own stuff, the gallery then has a vested interest in promoting you as well. Mm -hmm. The more you money make, the gallery makes, the more money you make. So yes, be as active. I mean, be more active than what you're, because the gallery has to promote a hundred other artists, but you promote yourself. Mm -hmm. But make sure that, that you do it in a way that is not demeaning to other mm -hmm. artists. Don't say that you're the best. Right. Say you're one of the best. Right. Don't say, I'm at the best gallery. I'm at one of the best galleries. I'm the headliner at the Little Art Gallery. Exactly. You, 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 don't be. Don't, yes, you can't be like that. Be great. Don't act great. That's the that's the thing that when I'm I'm talking to a lot of artists that come in, they have great work, but their attitude is just they are so much better than everybody else. Right. I immediately shut down and I'm like, yes. okay, I, I don't want to. You're just different. Yeah. You're different than everybody else. You're not necessarily better. Uh, my favorite thing to do is when somebody comes in that has a wonderful opinion of themselves and say, oh, you're just like such and such, and then they realize there are more people out there just like them. Make your gallery happy. Make yourself happy. Yes. Symbiosis. Yes. Wow. I gotta look that word it's up. Not the word of the day. No, it's not. It's just. It's a good word. It's something I learned on Star Trek. No. <laughs> Star Trek. Actually, yeah, Star Wars. Trill. The Briller symbiote. Uh, Is it fair to assume that most galleries are selling online as well as? Mm, good question. In Brilliant and question. Order? The question is. It, I guess is should you assume that the gallery is selling online as well as in the store or brick and mortar as she yeah. said much better word brick and mortar yeah, yeah. definitely no um, every gallery is different some galleries are more I, I'd like to use the word traditional mm -hmm. that the you know it's word of mouth it's reputation their their online presence is for a flavor they want you to come in because I mean, you take the Little Art Gallery as, as kind of an example. We've been open since 1968. Mm -hmm. We have works from just a myriad of, of <laughs> artists. If I were to have to put up every single piece, I would spend so much time on the web that I wouldn't yes. be able to promote any individual artist. Any, it would just be, it would be overwhelming. Plus then there'd be shipping. Exactly. And there'd be, there'd be so many facets of... Exactly. Now, yeah. that being said, it's a whole show in itself. Yeah, yes, <laughs> because there are galleries that do a wonderful job, wonderful job of putting work up for sale, and they include the shipping in it. And it's just, and they just this wonderful, seamless, just great thing. And they have a brick and mortar. So, I mean, there there are different models for everything. It just depends on the the level of technology, the level of of comfort, the level of expertise. Well, if you live. It, and that's a reasonable question because if you live in a town in Iowa that the population is 217. All you can sell is 217 pounds. And then, you know, 50, 60, mm -hmm. 70, 120 miles away is where even the closest thing that kind of is a gallery. And that's really just an art supply store yeah. where they slap some stuff on the walls. Jerry's. You may have to look at, not in Iowa. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Sorry, Iowa. you might have to. I would go there. I, 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 I was by place. I was gorgeous. Oh yeah. You you would have to potentially be islands. looking at online sales yes. because in, unless you're willing to relocate or you're going to go out of state to find a gallery first that either you're going to have to drive the work to yeah. or ship, that may be your option for now. And for a lot of people as well is shipping the buying stuff from overseas. You know, there's yeah. there's a yeah, stigma yeah. for buying work if you're not from a specific country you know like oh do I is this a legit thing or not right but sometimes that's just unavoidable if you love an artist and you want to buy their work and you're not in the same country 
Yes, you're going to have to do it online. Right. You're going to have to figure that out. Some galleries are better than that than others. It's it is a it, people that can do it. I am just in awe of because even as an individual artist, if someone contacts you directly, mm. be cautious. Yes. Not there's a lot of scams yeah, out there. Not every Nigerian prince is real. Well, there's a lot of scams that start with, my wife was looking at your website online and yes. our anniversary is coming up. Oh. And there's some, some artworks that she's really liked. That scam is huge out there right now. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's worded differently in each one, but it's the gist well, similar, yeah. they, is they, way too similar. Yeah. They play on our emotions. They play yes. on our, oh gosh, someone likes me. Someone really, really yeah. likes me. Yes. They, they really, really like your money. So... Be, get to know the person that you're selling to. Make sure you talk to someone Ask for real. Lots of questions. Yes. What did you like about it? Yes. Because I don't have a website. Yes. Oh, you're. See, no, because you're like all secure and everything. Yeah, I'm sneaky. Yes. I'm, I'm always skeptical. Oh, good, good. Yes, there's there's that then. <laughs> yes, Frida. How would one handle the restrictions placed on selling? Um, close competition like if there's how, how would an artist negotiate a 100 mile selling radius that that's a, how do you your your realm uh, your exclude con I, 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 that I, I, word i was looking for yeah um exclusivity exclusivity yes okay so every gallery has their their range that they feel comfortable with if you're dealing with a range or if you're dealing with the gallery if you're if, if I, as a gallery, say, I don't want you to sell anything that is within five miles of, of my, my location as the crow flies, that means dot, mm -hmm. circle, five mm -hmm. miles. You have, to, you have to know what the gallery's expectation is. If you are selling work at one gallery for one price, and that gallery has to, you, you come and get that piece out of that gallery to sell 100 miles away, not cool mm -mm. Uh, because you're taking money out of the pocket mm -hmm. in that instance it is it is up to you as the artist I keep she, I keep talking she's right there yeah I know really it's nice. hard to remember and she's yeah. got a good handwriting yeah um, it's it's up to you <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> she said look at her she gave me an eye roll a she little did. eye roll she did she's anyway um, you it's up to you to be honest if you if someone saw something in your store or in your gallery and they contacted you directly it it is up to you to be honest and say mm -hmm. okay talk to the gallery and yep. usually what you do is you give a percentage to the gallery a small percentage negotiated percentage usually galleries are really cool and they don't say oh, since it's not being since I'm not having to do the work I don't charge the whole amount a percentage of it but talk to your gallery let them know what's going on let them be aware so that you know, because it also affects them because now their reach has gone out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're, mm -hmm. so anyway. That's good. On the flip Point. side, what if somebody is selling out of a gallery that's out, that's over 100 miles away? So mm -hmm. they have to ship their artwork there as opposed to being able to just drive it over. Yes. Um, what's the best way to prepare your artwork for that? That in a professional shipper. Yeah. Yes. It, 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 and insure it. Yes. Um, pack like you were shipping yourself. Yeah. You know. Your child. No. Your, or your doggy. Well, in yes, your dog or your yeah. cat. Some places won't, like some shipping companies won't ship art. Right. right. She's saying some people it. won't ship right. art. Um, yeah. yeah and, and there are companies that specifically deal mm -hmm. with this. Um, you know, I've I've used both UPS and DHL, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm supposed to use names or anything, but okay, I've fine. used them. They've done a, an excellent job. But then again, I've also used our postal system and had the same kind of luck. Protect it, protect it, protect mm -hmm. it. If you don't feel comfortable building a frame that will support the piece, giving it proper cut, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Talk to your gallery. See what they say. Have them organize it for you. If it's big, they will have somebody that can do it. Don't do it yourself. Let them do it. Mm -hmm. And then you have to work that price into yes. your sale price, and you have to work that into the, with the gallery. So it's it's a you know if you're shipping a sock, it's not going to break as much as a glass ball. Right. So well, and 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 
common sense is in with if it's one thing if you're doing like small silk screen yeah. prints that are matted that you can put a couple pieces of foam core that right. are larger tape it around put it in a stiff mailer never had a problem with yep. any of those done them through ups and the postal service it's totally different if it's something that's stretched in a frame there's ways to do it not everybody has that visual this is how you protect something and that's fine right that's you, why there's people out there that do that for a living. Yeah, you got to feel comfortable with it. They've got to feel comfortable with it, and you've got to insure it. Yep. Is there anything else that you can think of that we've? Um. Yeah, we're getting too close to the. Oh. Witching hour. Oh, Frida's. Oh, here she, she goes. I know she just was Volume like. Volume two. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel. Yes. Um, do galleries tend to have preferences as far as mediums go? That's something you need to talk to the yeah. actual galleries with. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, it, it. every gallery is different. Um, she's asking if, if galleries accept one medium versus another. Um, it just depends on the gallery. If it's if it's a gallery that's specifically designed for sculpture, they may not take mm -hmm. uh, wall hanging. Mm -hmm. Some galleries don't accept sculpture. You yes. Know? And that's yep. kind of, you really just have to, that again, going back to know your gallery, visit your gallery. You know, know that, what you're selling. Well, and that's something that as you're showing somebody your work, you can talk about. Yeah. If, if you work in multiple mediums, what 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 do they have more luck with? Right. You know, it's one thing if it's oil and acrylic, because sometimes you can make those look so similar, mm -hmm. nobody's going to be able to tell. Yes. But if you're doing alcohol inks versus oil paintings, two completely yeah. different animals just because it's paint. Right. You know, doesn't mean that it's it's the same thing. So that's that's where that conversation should be taking place. The I value think. and the value is not predicated by the material that it's that it's done with. Right. It you know a beautiful acrylic is just as valuable yes. as a beautiful oil. Nowadays, especially and and here's where I throw a little Jerry's at you. Jerry's has so many different varieties of oils and acrylics. Yes. That you know you. you Depending on your technique or watercolor, mm -hmm. or whatever. Depending on your technique, it it doesn't matter what it is. We have some artists locally that do, they mix their oils and acrylics on the same canvas, mm -hmm. and which are it, it's beautiful, it's brilliant. Which they're putting oil on top of the acrylic. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Um, yes, it's okay. But I didn't want to get the shaming finger out. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm. I've been shamed before. Um, but it's anyway, not so yes, it doesn't. It's depending on the gallery. Mm -hmm. Is it typical for galleries to do a 50-50 split as far as the commission goes? Well, I will say this, and, and we talked about this before we yeah. came on. Um, every gallery is different. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you to decide whether it's valuable for them to, whatever split they're taking or whatever they're adding on to it, mm -hmm. because every gallery may do, some may say if your piece is selling for $1,000, they may double it and sell it for 2000 but you still only get 1000 or on the flip side, if you sell it for a thousand, if they take fifty percent, you only get five hundred. Right. What are, and what are they doing for that? That's, yeah. And the promotion. It's, it's whether that's doors realistic open. to you. Yeah. yeah. Again, knowing your gallery. Right. Do galleries require an about the artist? Yes. Artist statements <laughs> okay. or bios? And when do you? When do you? <laughs> I am so whoever asked that question. Thank you, because if I don't if I don't have talking points and I don't know you personally, I have a difficult time selling your work other than it's a nice X Y Z material on X Y Z material. Should they include this when they approach the gallery, or is this something to be provided you should, after? You should have that, and you should update you. it mm -hmm. every time you think about it. You should. And I, I am as guilty as every other artist for having, I'm getting nodded. <laughs> she, I, mine was fortunately, <laughs> I, ha, I had help with mine. It, it, I can sell your work better if I know something about you. If I know where you're coming from, and I don't mean your education, but that helps. But your, what your intention is as an artist, that helps me guide the buyer. It helps anybody guide the buyer into a feeling of emotional attachment so yes. if I know that you are a, if you foster 
uh, animals. I, and I see somebody walking in and they've got like a little paw button on their shirt. Right. If I'm a good salesperson, I will notice this and I will say, oh yeah, you should look at this artist because they're also a foster person. Oh, emotional attachment, bonding, mm -hmm. out the door with a sale. Mm -hmm. So the better, the more accurate, wonderful information you give me, the better I can sell your work. And also, it also just naturally makes me focus. If I know more about you, I'm probably going to be able to go to you more often. Mm -hmm. So the more I know about you, the, the better I can sell your work. And, and it's something where if you know that you're not great at writing, everybody's everybody's got friends that are or everybody's got friends that can help with feedback Amy. and there's there's people that do that do that type of writing for yes. hire too that you can give them information and they can write something just like in journalism the who what when where why and how yep. can be applied even if you're not the best writer if you think about it in those terms yeah and you think about who am I what do I do why do I do it what's my motivation Taking some notes and writing some of those things down may help you discover interesting talking points, mm -hmm. even just when you're talking to the gallery about yourself that can be inserted. You can do your own interview on paper to then help you write those, you know, those, the bio and those types of things. Are there certain things to include every time? No. It is up to you to include what you think is valuable. Um, so, sorry. Um, include information that's going to make me have an, an mm -hmm. attachment to someone else. Mm -hmm. If you think your best thing is the 93 awards that you've won, granted, I'm not going to look at all 93. I'm going to pull a highlight of a one or two and just say, oh, this is a, a, a Medal of Arts winner in such and such town. But if, if to the you, right buyer that you have 93 yeah. words, maybe what they want to lord over their friends when yes. they show you exactly. the piece in their house. But make sure that what you give me or give any gallery is easy, easily read and easily yes. remembered because yes. there are 93 to yeah, yeah. 200 different artists and I've got to remember something about each one. Right. All right. I think oh, we'll one do one more question, question and, then, and then we probably need to wrap it up. Brokers, who, what, where, why? Brokers, they are they are a necessary uh, necessary force. Um, if you if you're going to use a broker, make sure that your broker and you have an understanding. The same thing contract because technically they are your gallery mm -hmm. now. You treat them as your gallery. If they're brokering twelve other artists and they walk into a gallery, they're showing twelve artists, not one. Right. And so. You have to be aware that, that on the flip side, they may be showing artists that are incredibly well known and they're sandwiching you in there to get you into a gallery mm -hmm. that you normally wouldn't have that opportunity. Know your broker, make sure that, that they have a resume mm -hmm. that is just phenomenal, that they have, they have huge resources. Contact galleries and say, had, do you work with this broker? Have you had experience with they may the Galleries may not tell you, but at least give it that opportunity. Brokers are important, but they can also, if they're not a good presenter, if a broker walks in here and, and, and is not presenting your work very well, I'm gonna shut them down very quickly and say, I'm sorry, I have a limited amount of time, Show me one person, and then you've blown, they've blown your opportunity. Well, if they've got a stable of 20 people that they're yeah. marketing, they just want to make the sale yes. one way or the other. It's still in their best interest to make the sale regardless of who right. you go to. Yeah. That's why, which, if you don't like talking to people and you're really yes. shy and you don't deal well with that, maybe the broker is the best thing. Remember, they're taking a cut of your, it's not yes. just still the gallery taking that commission. They may be taking a 20% yeah. cut out of what you get. So you're left with 30%. You're left with 25%. That's something to consider. But if you know you can't talk to people, that you freeze up, that you f you're freaked out, that you just want to be in your studio and left alone, or if you live in a big city, yes, that they're not taking, um, they're not reviewing portfolios. Right. That broker may that be might the be only way only in. Option. So, but know your broker. Yes. Your mom, your brother, your father, your sister, your dog may be wonderful people. They're not brokers unless they're actual brokers. Yes. If they come into a gallery and they are representing your work, oh, my Johnny, he is the most wonderful artist. He does the best little daisies in the world. 
We sell them at the church bazaar yep. left and right. They are going to make me have warm and fuzzies. But honestly, I'm going to treat them as that. Oh, that's, right. you're, that's yeah. wonderful. Your mom and so brother sweet. and dog and cat love you. They're not a, they're not a professional broker. Bl- bless their heart. Oh, bless their heart. Ooh, that was an insult. Ooh. The- <laughs> Run this out. Yes. Um, but yeah, so make sure your broker is a professional broker. Check their resume. It is a business. Yep. Do not be offended if they say they're not going to take you because they may have someone who does that. Also, do not do not feel like you're offending them by saying, no, I don't want to use mm-hmm. you. It would help if you told them why, just like right. any anything, because right, right. they are your gallery at that point. Right. All right. So if you've just joined us really late or... I talk a lot? No, 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 no. <laughs> but, or just, I mean, some people can't get, yeah. you know, they come rushing home and stuff happened and they've just gotten here. Hi. Yes. As soon as this ends, it'll start right back over. You can watch it from the very beginning so you don't miss out on any of the information. This stays up. It, it can be rewatched. You can ask questions at any time. Leave questions. We'll try to get back to them with answers or with ideas or any of those type of things. So, you know, it's not there. Make sure you've watched the episode because we probably covered some of it. Oh, we covered something. If, you know, so, so the answer may already be there. So just, you know, make sure that you've watched it to see. But, but... This was a very important episode, and we really, really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so you. much for letting us be here. You just that was that was amazing. Before you end, can you take just a quick pan just to see how gorgeous this place is? Because I, I do think that that needs to be yeah. shown. It's was just it? the girls are ducking. Yes. By the way, the ladder yeah. is not ducking. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, I just I just want them to, to see Ophelia's this is, work. Yes, Ophelia's work up there. You know, this is just a really neat place. It was just, we really appreciate, truly, that you guys let us film here because it's hard to get out and on site, and you guys made this so possible, adjusting lights and everything. This we, was we fun. We couldn't thank you enough. This was fun. So I... Oh, come bring it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love you. So that, that thank you guys heartfelt. for watching. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. I know. It's hot. these lights. Oh. <laughs> Monkey suit. Oh, everybody loved your jacket, Amy. Yes. Oh, thank and you. And they loved your bow tie. Thank I know. you. I know. And it's not a clip on. No. Nope. It's attached in the back. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. And this was really for you because we've worked up to this point. You guys have followed along with us and we appreciate it. So we will see you next week and take care. Awesome. That was fun. Yes.